I believe it's obvious to assume that the breathwork method is somehow connected with taking cold plunges. But does this deliberate breathing technique actually warm you up? That's the question. The breathing technique is very peculiar, if you really think about it. On one side you have these vigorous inhalations that look like hyperventilating. On the other side you have these very long breath holds after an exhalation that can last for two or even three minutes. And after your breath holds in between rounds, you have a so-called recovery breath, where you inhale to your full capacity and hold your breath in your chest for 15 seconds. So the breathing method is actually very simple, but what happens in the body is a little bit more complex. Our respiration system is very interesting. Our breathing not only reflects our inner state, for example, if we are stressed, we tend to have a faster breathing rhythm than when we are calm, but we can also affect our inner state with deliberate breathing. When we do the Wim of Method breathing, the vigorous inhalations will raise our alertness by engaging our fight or flight system. By exhaling and holding our breath comfortably, we engage our parasympathetic nervous system, which controls our rest and digest system. So, by engaging both sides of the autonomic nervous system, we on one side raise adrenaline by more than 300%, but at the same time we get into a deep meditative state by holding our breaths for such a long time. By the way, for comparison, the adrenaline level can get as high as someone who would go bungee jumping for the first time. So does the adrenaline rush we get from deliberate breathing and engaging our fight or fight system also protect us from the cold? The short answer is no, even though the stress response gears our body and mind towards action. But to understand that, we first need to understand how our body keeps our temperature in balance. So when we take a cold shower or a cold plunge, our skin temperature drops quickly which will also trigger our fight or flight response. At the same time, our veins constrict and redirect our blood to the core. This so-called vasoconstriction protects us from the cold. The counterpart of this would be vasodilation, where our veins dilate when we are hot. We also get a rush of adrenaline when we take an ice bath, because the cold shock signals our brain that it's an emergency situation and we need to get out of the cold as fast as possible. So the funny thing is that adrenaline or epinephrine is also a powerful vasoconstrictor. That means when we do the Wim of Method breathing, we can actually feel cold because we flood our bodies with adrenaline. This is why many people use blankets when doing the Wim Hof Method breathwork. To give you another example of this phenomenon, have you ever watched a horror movie? While sitting on your cozy couch and watching a scary horror movie, you feel the fear rising in you, which kicks in your fight or flight system. And then you suddenly feel a chill on your skin. The same situation. It's not because the room temperature dropped from a ghost lurking in the shadow of your room, or is it? Enough of this scary movie stuff. If you're interested in learning more about the Wim Hof Method, other breathwork techniques and mindfulness, I might have something for you. On my Breath Mind Body Academy, and community, you find courses and a supporting community to teach and support you through this transformational journey. Find out how these techniques can improve your mental performance and alleviate stress. Additionally, from June 7th, I will host a brand new four-week Wim Hof Method deep dive. I will host weekly Zoom sessions and Q&As and give you weekly assignments to help you integrate everything into your daily life. So let's take a look here. This is my Breath Mind Body Academy. You have all the spaces here, live session, all the recordings, the courses. Here are some. Here's my breastwork, guided breastwork library. I just dropped an hour old guided Wim of Method breastwork session here. And yeah, the Wim of Method deep dive will be held here on the live sessions in the next one Wim Hof Method Deep Dive week one 
will drop soon. By the way, I don't know yet if I will host another such event. So take the chance and sign up for my Brass Mind Body membership. Our bodies have two options for producing heat. We can produce heat mechanically by transforming muscle movements into energy. Shivering is a prime example of how our body produces heat when cold. We also have the option to produce heat by metabolizing a special tissue in our body, so-called brown adipose tissue, which is often called brown fat. I find the study data of brown fat activation while doing ice baths quite controversial. Some studies found a higher amount of activation of brown fat in people who regularly cold do cold exposure, but other studies found very minimal activation of brown fat when taking ice baths. Also interestingly, Wim Hof does not have a higher brown fat percentage or activation than his twin identical brother, who doesn't follow cold exposure practices like Wim does. However, one study found that Wim somehow can produce a lot of heat from his intercostal muscles, the muscles between, uh, between the ribs. This was measured in a PET scanner, where Wim was wearing a special suit that the scientists could pump cold water or warm water through it. So Wim managed to hold a constant skin temperature throughout the experiment, while the control group skin temperature all fell as you would expect. So at first I thought that made sense because when you do strong breathing, you move your rib cage a lot, which would then produce the heat. But the website of the Wim Hof Method states clearly not to do the breathwork technique in or near water because of the real danger of falling unconscious. Additionally, in the experiment Wim couldn't use the breathwork technique in the PET scanner when cold water was running through the suit because he had to remain as still as possible because of the scanning process. He said he could prime himself with the breastwork an hour or so before the experiment started. But from there everything happened in his mind. You might think that he may just have been built differently and that it had nothing to do with the mind at all. Well, they had him also do the experiment without mental preparation or anything. And guess what? He showed that same skin temperature fluctuation as the control group when the cold water was running through through the suit. Bracing yourself for what's about to come can make a real physiological difference. Studies like Aliyah Crumb's on the placebo effect have repeatedly shown this. The beliefs people have can change the outcome. There are two dynamics in play here. One is our belief coupled with years of experience challenging ourselves with cold exposure. The other is the ability to stay calm in uncomfortable environments or situations. The thing with beliefs is that we can't trick ourselves. We can believe a person of authority who educates us on something, or we can forge a new belief through experience. Through his practice, Wim developed a growth mindset towards cold exposure and challenges. Through his experience, he can confidently access his mind stay calm and generate heat through visualization, as he claims. The following sounds like a Jedi story from Star Wars. The ability to calm oneself quickly in a stressful environment is a real superpower. My father, who studied ancient Japanese history, told me a tale of a samurai who awaited a hail of arrows by calmly standing still without trying to dodge them and still awaited them somehow. A similar feat was shown in, a chi in the Chinese movie Hero, where calligraphy masters calmly painted their calligraphy while thousands of arrows from the enemy's soldiers rained down on them. So I don't know if these stories are real, but the point here is that calm confidence goes way back as a skill of great masters. So if you look at physiology, being calm involves engaging our parasympathetic nervous system, which leads to vasodilation, where blood vessels widen, increasing blood flow to the skin and extremities. The increase in blood flow can make you feel warmer. 
The ability to quickly calm down in an ice bath is also very handy for other stressful situations where you want to stay calm. If we focus on long exhalations, we can engage our parasympathetic nervous system to calm us down. This is the reason that in addition to mental preparation, one should gradually try to calm the breathing down when entering an ice bath and eventually be able to accept the cold. And once we accept it and then come out of the ice bath, we don't feel cold. From there, one of the best ways to combine a strong mind with mechanical therm thermogenesis, heat generation, is to go into a deep horse stance and turn the torso from one side to the other. This is also the standard Wim Hof method protocol after an ice bath. Studies have shown that the positive effects of an ice bath increase even more when we heat ourselves up again from within, in contrast to externally through a hot shower, for example. Personally, I notice that I don't tend to shiver if I do a 10 to 15 minute deep horse stand session after the ice bath. If I go straight into a hot shower, I still feel cold for hours afterwards or even start shivering uncontrollably. If you want to learn more about the power of the horse dance in the Wim Hof Method, please click this video here. Thank you for watching.